Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, National Park Service tries drone inspections on oldest Sequoia, Merlin snags C-130J automation assignment from SOCOM, and FAA invites comments on Powered Lift certification draft. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric powered to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. National Park Service tries drone inspections on oldest Sequoia. The National Park Service isn't kind to drones, but once in a while even they see some use in the little tools, particularly where they can be used to assess the health of old growth forests without a crude aircraft. Doodle Labs highlighted its work in networking a recent effort to scan, document, and assess the health of General Sherman, the world's largest living tree. The giant sequoia, Lands Coalition, and other groups planned a health inspection for the tree, checking for damage from bark beetles and inclement weather. The sequoia population has had a rough go of things in recent years, losing about 20% of their mature population to forest fires and beetle activity. In order to inspect it, the team opted to use Firefly's Astro Prime, a commercial platform equipped with LiDAR and high-res video gear. The Astro Prime made its way up and down all 275 feet of the 2200-year-old sequoia, relying upon Doodle Lab's mesh rider radios for a consistent data link. That proved vital in keeping the system in contact with the base, since the only C2 network on hand is what the team packed in themselves. The mesh network was handy for ensuring consistent signal, given the thick canopy of the woods above, and 300-foot altitude needed to assess the entire tree. And after the break, EVE Air Mobility releases additional footage of full-scale prototype. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. EVE Air Mobility releases additional footage of full scale prototype. EVE Air Mobility showed off the process of building its first full size EVTEL prototype. In the race to market, EVE remains in the running, being far enough along in the design and certification process to put up a good fight against competitors like Archer and Joby. The video isn't anything too groundbreaking, simply consisting of sweeping shots of the build process and a short voiceover from Louise Valentini, Chief Technology Officer. Valentini said the firm would be targeting a range of 60 miles to start. Surf Air establishes foothold in Brazil. Surf Air Mobility inked an MOU with the Brazilian caravan operator to convert four aircraft into electrics. Surf Air has been pretty busy finding business south of the equator, where the Cessna Caravan and Grand Caravan often form the backbone of outlying settlements air transit. As such, it's a very hard offer to pass up, swapping their fuel-burning Pratt & Whitney PT6 turboprops for a proprietary battery-powered propulsion system. While many onlookers focus on Surf's all-electric aircraft, they intend to offer a hybrid variant too. That should ultimately prove just as popular in time. Simulation of emergency on ISS causes alarm. Wednesday at approximately 528 Central, audio was heard on the NASA livestream feed from an internal ground-based simulation channel that a crew member on the International Space Station was enduring symptoms of decompression sickness. The audio was misrouted to the NASA channel instead of its likely intended audience in the ground control center. 
Mind you, it was a simulation exercise and required NASA to calm panic-stricken social media persons who thought it was the real thing. Police Department Receives FAA Approval for Drone First Responder Program UAVionics, based in Big Fork, Montana, announced that the FAA has approved the Oswego City Police Department's drone as first responder program for operations beyond visual line of sight without visual observers. The UAVionics Cassia G ground-based detect and avoid system was instrumental in gaining the approval. Cassia G is an advanced ground-based DAA surveillance system that provides crucial airspace awareness to enhance situational awareness for drones operating beyond visual line of sight with no visual observers, as well as any piloted aircraft within proximity of the drones. Well, that was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Merlin snags C-130J automation assignment from SOCOM. Merlin, hot off a few test flights aboard some KC-135s, has gotten a $105 million contract to automate the C-130J. The contract was granted under an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract by the U.S. Special Operations Command to lay the groundwork for a, quote, production-ready, reduced aircrew capability, end quote, using their favorite fixed-wing aircraft, the C-130J Super Hercules. The contract will make use of some nifty utilizing small business innovative research or SBIR authorities to really hit the ground running, hopefully shortening the runway for a production-ready autonomous kit for the C-130J specifically. Merlin notes that its previous partnership with the Air Force from 2022 included multiple phases in a similar vein, even including design integration for the C-130J, testing, flight testing, full takeoff and landing demos, maturation of autonomy skills, and additional integration in the Special Operations Force aircraft. This most recent contract will focus on making that autonomous aircrew capability real-life usable and provide some funding to begin integration should it pan out. Having the capability to automate a C-130J would be a definite get for SOCOM and the USAF, allowing them to pawn off routine flights on the automation and allocate human pilots to missions of greatest import. After these messages, FAA invites comments on Powered Lift Certification Draft. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. FAA invites comments on Powered Lift Certification Draft. The FAA is looking for public commentary on a draft advisory circular regarding the type, production, and airworthiness certification of Powered Lift. It's no surprise that the old regs may need some updating now that the advanced air mobility industry is beginning to nip at the heels of established categories. In the past, it's been sufficient to keep regulatory attention focused on the most common passenger-carrying aircraft, between fixed-wing aircraft and rotary-wing helicopters. Now, the FAA says recent applications for the type certification of powered lift have proposed passenger seating configurations of six or fewer, weighing 12,500 pounds or less, and utilizing battery-powered electric propulsion. 
For such projects, the FAA published the proposed airworthiness criteria for public consideration and comment, and has drawn on that body of work to draft an advisory circular called Type Certification Powered Lift. It establishes a more efficient path in designating the type certification basis for certain powered lift projects, which will preclude the administration's need to announce airworthiness criteria for each and every project that comes across its desk. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.